Greetings one and all, and welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Paul James Caden, and in today's show, we're going to be talking about being lost in the metaverse. You know, we hear a lot of talk these days about the internet uniting us all as a global community. And of course, there's the talk of one day soon we'll be able to put on our goggles and modify our environment and connect with, you know, family and friends and people across the world and be able to modify our environment, you know, through this virtual reality that, you know, we'll be living in uh, a world of our own making. And people are really excited about this. I mean, as it is now, there's a, a lot of people that live on the internet. They're constantly on their phones and devices, you know, even if they're gathered together with family and friends and loved ones, you know, uh, a holiday dinner, for example, and how many people are sitting at the table or just sitting on the couch, not joining in the conversation or the festivities, tapping away on their cell phone, chatting with friends, looking things up, watching videos. And so there's this idea that, you know, virtual reality is going to have all of this at our fingertips. We'll, we'll be in that world. We'll no longer be looking at a flat screen, but we'll be able to go into this alternate reality and have all this information at our fingertips. You know, we'll no longer be playing games. We'll be in the video games. We'll be able, you know, you hear it now, you know, that people put on their virtual reality goggles and they say, well, I meditated for 20 minutes in outer space, you know? So there's this uh, very big push to herd everybody into this virtual reality where we're not even really connecting as human beings anymore. And of course, this sounds very appealing to a lot of people because although we see a lot of people who live on the internet. They, they live with their eyes glued to their cell phone, always chatting, always texting, always looking things up, always watching videos, always watching the trending new videos. You know, this is very appealing to them because a lot of people, what do they say? They say they feel lonely. They feel empty. They feel like they don't have anybody to talk to or connect with. And it's, it's kind of strange to me to think about that because here we are living in this society where we're continually on the internet, continually on our phones. We're not connecting to the people around us. There are studies out there now that show, you know, most people, younger people, don't even really want to make friends or connect with their friends. You know, they're, they're more happy having uh, the virtual relationship in chat, you know, texting people. But yet they say, well, I feel lonely. I feel depressed. I feel like nobody cares. I feel like no one's around that I can talk to or lean on, you know, discuss my problems with. And it never dawns on us to just put down the devices and connect with people in real life. But we have this notion that putting on the virtual reality goggles and going into the virtual reality, connecting with other people, connecting with the little avatars, well, this is going to make us happy. But the truth of the matter is, it's not. It's only going to it's only going to pave the way for more addictive behavior. If people can't stay off their phones at the dinner table, how much harder is it going to be for them to stay away from their virtual reality goggles that takes them into a whole different world? They're escaping reality. And if they, there's no friends or family or anybody they can connect with, well, they can just connect with any old person on the Internet, anybody from around the world and chat and watch videos and, you know, share, you know, trendy things that are happening, you know, uh, you know, on the Internet. 
so how much more of a dependency are people going to have on such a thing if, if they're this addicted to their cell phones? People are going to be completely out of touch with themselves, with their own emotions, with their own souls, and with reality. And it's only going to cause more depression. It's only going to cause more hostile uh, interactions between people in real time. Because there's studies out there that say a lot of this violence that we're seeing, you know, people that are just verbally attacking one another or physically attacking one another, you know, people going on these shooting sprees, you know, that it has to do, um, you know, a lot with the isolation that we have in our society today. You know, people were talking about this before COVID, you know, that people were feel, feeling isolated. People were feeling uh, lonely and people were losing the ability to connect and interact with other human beings because we've gotten so used to this texting, virtual relationships. We don't know how to connect with people in real time. And that also, it's very easy on the internet to attack somebody. And we've seen that for years. People just attacking and insulting anybody and everybody verbally and even threatening. Oh, if, you know, I was there, you know, you're, you're a chicken hiding behind your computer screen and I'd smash your head in and I'd do this and I'd do that. You know, once we're, it, it's almost like simulated flight training, you know, like simulated training. If we're on the internet and we're finding it easier and easier in these virtual long distance relationships to threaten people and threaten people with violence and to insult them, well, naturally it becomes easier to do that in real time. This is real life now. I disagree with you, I can start pounding you down with words and insults or even, you know, physically, you know, with my fists. And I, you know, I, I hypothesize that that kind of thing is only going to get worse with the virtual reality. Because now we can insult people, but we, we could probably also engage in some kind of virtual fighting with the little avatars. So it's, it's going to become a way of thinking, a way of life. It's going to, be, it's going to become uh, the new norm. You know, it's not going to bring, bring people closer together. It's going to make people more isolated, more selfish, more narrow-sighted when it comes to life and accepting the differences in others. So this sort of thing is, is not going to help people. It's not going to make people feel better emotionally or psychologically. I feel it's going to give people even more of a license to be violent, to be, uh, you know, sexually perverse, because what is this going to open up with the whole virtual reality, you know, sex? And that's something that's uh, certainly on the table. You know, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, in the world today, making sex dolls, sex androids. You know, even androids that look like children for, you know, pedophiles to play out their fantasies and, and, and not break the law. You know, so again, all of this is just training to go out and enact it in real life without any uh, moral checks and balances, no conscience. And, you know, you know, that r really takes us down a whole new rabbit hole in this discussion, you know, that we're being trained, especially the young people, you know, we're, we're being trained to, to seek our worth and 
our happiness out there. You know, the government's going to make us happy. If the right people are voted in, well, that's going to make us happy. If they get to, you know, put through their policies, well, that's going to make us happy. If I get that new purse, that's going to make me happy. If I can live in a fantasy world and, and, and make believe I'm like a Kardashian, well, that's going to make me happy. And people aren't happy. Because when those illusions are taken away from people, the wrong political party gets voted in. The boyfriend or the girlfriend leaves. You're not popular anymore. You lose the cash flow to buy your designer purses and clothes and whatever else it is you think is going to make you happy. What happens? And I've seen this happen in real time with real people. People hit rock bottom. I mean, emotional hysteria, depression. I need help. I don't know what to do. They're talking about going and seeing a, a psychologist or checking themselves into, you know, um, you know, a psychiatric ward. I've, I've seen this happen in real time. Take those little things away from people. And everything collapses. And unfortunately, it's it's the same way with the Internet with our devices. It's going to be that way with the virtual reality. If, if the internet, internet ever crashes and burns, something ever happens, people can't get online, they, they, they can't use their phones. It's already been proven that people go through withdrawal. It's like being on a drug. They get depressed, they get violent, they get, they get, you know, nervous and, and, and anxious and they lash out and they, they go through a withdrawal being away from their phone. So all of this seeking happiness through stuff and trends and internet and virtual reality and being popular or, you know, being an influencer, which is another thing. I mean, I, I, I could go on and on ticking off a list. You know, you see these people on the internet who want to be influencers and, and if something happens where that is taken away, they lose their popularity, their, their little channel on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or wherever bottoms out because they caught doing you know, they got caught doing something stupid. And sometimes it's not even all that stupid. People are very judgmental. They'll, they'll cancel somebody out for the littlest of reasons. And what happens to these people, these influencers? Again, they crash, they burn. They're depressed. Some of them even contemplate suicide. So, so is all of this really satisfying us? Is all of this really making us happy? Is all of this really bringing us closer together as a global community? Is it really going to bring greater satisfaction that we're able to put on goggles and create, you know, brand new worlds for ourselves and escape from reality? This is nothing more in my opinion, than a technological hallucinogenic. That's all it is. But you're creating your trip. You're creating the trip that you go on. And I think that's even more addictive than, you know, taking some of these um, hallucinogenics, you know, where people have these, uh, you know, uh, experiences as they say, or, you know, they're, they're just so wild or spiritual or whatever the case may be. I think it's going to be even more addictive because now people are able to create their own trip, their own reality. 
and there's a thing online. Um, a relative of mine shared it on Facebook. I, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember the whole whole premise, but it was an AI uh, that was claiming to be Jesus and Buddha and Socrates. You know, all these different personalities, and it, the thing was to talk to the AI and and and. You know, it, it was basically saying, prove to me that I'm not Jesus, you know, which was the AI thing, I, I think it was. So people are going to find, you know, naturally over time, uh, fake uh, AI religion. You know, that's that's already a thing that's out there. You know, in, in, in AI, they will trust because it's smarter than us and, you know, it can help us build these realities. There's, there's all kind of pitfalls for people to fall in. And when and if, and I believe it's only a when, all of that crashes and burns and it's not available anymore, people aren't going to know what to do. And that's the sad thing, folks, that if we do have some kind of earth-altering event where the grid goes down. And I mean, it goes down and it's down for years or years and years. You know, something that possibly uh, takes us back to the Stone Age. We're talking, you know, something apocalyptic, which could happen. You know, our world, this life, this grid that we've uh, created, it, it's a lot more fragile than we think it is. And there's a hundred and one, you know, a thousand and one, a million. There's many things that could make all this go away overnight. And then it's very sad because I think we're going to see what you see in a lot of like post-apocalyptic movies where, you know, people are forming groups killing others to take what they have, even, even being cannibalistic, you know, hunting other people to, to eat. You know, pe people through all of this are becoming uh, more animalistic as they get more, uh, more in touch with, the, with those base animal instincts and ways of thinking within themselves so that they're not progressing they're they're digressing and you know that goes uh, I talk about this a lot um, I quote uh, in the Arantia book where it says you know when when someone ignores that divine spirit within them you know the the fragment of God within them that is there to lead them and guide them and you know, help them uh, grow their soul and become a, a moral, spiritual being. When somebody ignores that, you know, it would the spirit of God within us will not force anything upon us. It will not force us to do anything that we don't want to do, and it may even depart from us if it's not welcome within us. And then it says when people do that, naturally they start falling back into the old base animalistic ways of uh, acting and thinking. And I think that's really what's happening uh, in our world today. And virtual reality isn't going to solve it. It's not going to make us happier. It's not going to bring us closer together. It's not going to make us a global community. It's only going to exacerbate the problems we're already having by being antisocial, egotistic, rude, arrogant, violent, all these things that the age of technology has bred in us just by living our lives on a cell phone screen. Those things are really going to get worse when we enter the age of virtual reality, when we enter the age of the metaverse.
But how do we avoid this? And I don't think, at least, that the state people are in right now, the state, you know, humanity is in right now. I don't, I don't think it can be um, completely avoided. As I've stated in, you know, many podcasts uh, past, um, I, I am a believer in, you know, the uh, the prophecies, you know, that that were uh, spoken of by the prophets in the Bible by Jesus. I'm not so sure that all of our theologians have it all hammered out that it's going to happen the way they think it's going to happen, you know, and line up so neatly, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, we know exactly what's happening. Uh, I think, you know, there might be some uh, differences uh, or, or different ways these things will come to pass, um, but I think they will come to pass. And I think there's a, a very stormy time ahead for planet Earth. You know, but we have to be uh, prepared. And, and I'm, also, um, I'm also a believer in what the, uh, the early Christians taught, that, you know, prophecy is conditional. You know, we can avoid these things by making the right choices, by being better people by following the ways of God. So it's not something that has to happen. You know, we can change the outcome. We can delay things. We, 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 can, we can avoid a lot of trouble ahead by what we do, by what we do next, by what we do going through all of this. But I think one of the things, I mean, this is not the only thing, but one of the things when it comes to all of this is that we have to realize none of this stuff is going to save us. None of this stuff is going to make us happy. You know, Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke in the 17th chapter uh, that the kingdom of God is within you. And this is something that the mystics of old always believed and they always practiced meditation and contemplative prayer, which was going within, focusing within, meeting God within, inviting God to reveal himself in our hearts. And the Christian mystics do this, the the uh, Islamic mystics, the, the Sufi, you know, any mystic. Mysticism isn't what we see, um, you know, a lot in the, the New Age practice of to, uh, practices of today. A mystic is not someone who sits around and plays with crystals and does spells and uh, calls upon nature spirits or, you know, what, whatever the case may be, you know, all, all the, uh, uh, as they call the, the woo woo stuff, <laughs> you know, uh, that is not true mysticism. True mysticism is connecting with God in your own heart, in your own soul. It's sitting quietly and opening that space and inviting the Spirit of God in, inviting the Spirit of God to reveal itself to us. And it takes practice, but eventually we touch the hem of that garment and that's where we feel bliss and blessed. And we experience uh, what the Buddhists call enlightenment. We start to see things different. We begin to get these revelations, these thoughts, these understandings that go beyond what we understood and knew before. We see things differently. We're kind of like the movie camera that pans back or pans up, and we see the bigger picture of life on earth. And we start to see things for what they really are. We don't fall into a lot of these traps 
and depressions and mindsets that everyone else is, is falling into because we start to see what's causing them and we fix it in our own lives and then we avoid them. So we're not going to find happiness in the metaverse. We're not going to find happiness being the next Kim Kardashian. We're not going to find happiness in, you know, playing this silly game that we see a lot of young people playing now, wanting to, you know, transition, you know, their their gender and then later regretting it. And I'm not, you know, putting down people that, you know, feel they're a different sex. I'm I'm not familiar with all the science of that and that's not something I want to get into, but it's also become a very big trend. It's pushed on the internet. And again, I've seen in real life a lot of people who, you know, young people that suddenly say, oh, th th this seems cool. I'm a guy. I'm a girl. And then they start transitioning and then they regret what they did because they realized it's not what they really wanted. Uh, they were just chasing a trend that they thought would make them happy if they were somebody else. And that's sad. So I got off on a, a mini tangent there, but, you know, these things aren't going to make us happy. The world just keeps putting more confusion and garbage and stuff in front of us saying, look over here, look over here, look over there. Oh, look at this. You need this. You got to do that. And then you're going to be happy. Then you're going to be somebody. And then people attain those things and they still feel depressed. They still feel empty. So then it's the next thing. Well, what you really need is this over here. So the world keeps people jumping through these hoops. And none of it ever really satisfies. And so the mystics of old said, hey, true happiness is focusing on the inner life, understanding yourself, knowing yourself, working on yourself, connecting with God within yourself, and then, in le then letting all that flow to others. Because when you love yourself, when you're at peace with yourself, when you connect with God in your, within yourself, and you feel that love of God and that peace of God, when you feel all those things within yourself, then you can see them and acknowledge them and respect them in other people. If we see ourselves as just someone who wants to be a Kardashian or some, you know, foolish thing like that, then everybody else is just competition. How much do we see that in life? I don't like her because she's my competition. I don't like him because he's competing with me. Rather than the mutual respect, seeing one another as spiritual beings, children of God. Souls that are evolving. Connecting with God, connecting with one another, connecting with our environment in a meaningful way. And it all starts by going within. The kingdom of God is within you. Even the Arantia book tells us that no one can tell us about God. No one can give us faith. We have, we have to experience God because those personal experiences with God is what makes us know that he is. And we experience God by sharing our inner life with him. So this idea of the inner life going within it's, it's in all of the spiritual practices and religions of the world. And yet the sad thing is 
that mainstream religion always looks at mystics and says, oh, no, they're wrong. Oh, no, that's not good at all. But then mainstream religion turns around and what do they do? They say you're going to find happiness, peace, and connection with God through these outer rituals. Say these prayers. Partake of these rituals. Light these candles. Eat this wafer. You know, all, all these all these outward religious practices. And we still never really connect with God within our own hearts. But didn't even Jesus say it is the it is the Father within me, the Father in me that does the works. This should be this should be telling us something. And we need to get away from all of this outer and start focusing more on the inner. Because that's the only way we're going to find peace. That's the way we're. That's the only way we're going to find happiness. That's the only way we're going to come overcome loneliness. That's the only way that we're going to start seeing one another is more than just competition or annoyances in our lives. Or however it is we view others, you know, in a less than kind of way. It all starts within and grows outward. So I would encourage everybody listening to this podcast, look into mysticism a little bit. There, there's so many different ways to, to uh, what they call, you know, enter the silence. Um, practice uh, contemplative prayer. You know, there's a lot of ways uh, in which one can do that, and it's it's not hard uh, to find. If if you know people are interested in this, you know, podcast is something uh, people are interested in. Uh, I'll do another show explaining some of the ways in which we can go inward. In fact, that's that's probably something I'll 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 do anyway because it's it's an exercise and an experience that's that's much needed. So yeah, that's something I'll share in a uh, in a future show. How to go into the silence, how to go within and experience uh, the embrace of God. So until then, you know, stop looking without. Stop looking out there for things to make you happy and bring you peace because it's not going to start looking within the kingdom of God is within you and we get to know God through sharing our inner life with him I appreciate you listening I hope you got something out of this podcast I'll talk to you next time until then stay in the light everyone walk with God, walk with the angels, and I'll talk to you next time here on Angels of Urantia. God bless.